GPU prices go up, now you can find Android devices wherever and even if their battery's dead. And Intel, you got some splaining to do. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, April 9, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about some price increases that are gonna be hitting the NVIDIA GPU market, specifically over in China. But one of the reasons to concern yourself with this is that China is one of a major GPU market. 300 million consumers buy GPUs over in China, and this could potentially bode bad news for us here in different regions, but potentially not. However, it does look like many GPUs are are getting price hikes from AIB partners from the tune of 10 to 30 yuan all the way up to two to 300, which doesn't amount to a huge price increase. We're talking between five and $45 for the 4090D getting the highest price increase, the GTX 1650 getting the lowest price hike. And it's like the 4070 Super is gonna be within that 15 to $20 price increase. A lot of the pricing tends to remain stable here in the US, whereas it can fluctuate and vary regionally in other portions of the world, especially over in Europe, they're more sensitive to these types of price hikes. So if NVIDIA and their partners are raising the prices in one of the most populous regions of the world, you could potentially see ripple effects of this down the line in different regions. I know that especially when I was living in South Africa, we were particularly susceptible to this. So uh, just keep an eye out. The GPUs might be increasing in price. 300 million PC gamers got to pay a little bit more for their graphics cards due to the fact that NVIDIA just has overwhelming demand and they're trying to make sure that uh, people don't buy as much or they make more money off of what they buy. Speaking of buying stuff, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor. We're all PC people here. That's why you're watching. And you know who else are PC people? Today's video sponsor, Newegg. Newegg makes it easy to get the very best in PC parts. With their new at Newegg section, you can easily find the newest and hottest tech that Newegg has to offer, like the MSI Claw or the 14900KS. If PC parts and building isn't your thing, then you're in luck, because Newegg has two great solutions for you, the Laptop Finder and the PC Builder. The Laptop Finder makes it easy to narrow the selection down to exactly what you need. Simply select your use case, set your price, and select the features you want. Then Newegg sorts through their library and shows you products that fit your exact specifications. And for the PC Builder, it's just as easy. You simply select which component type you wanna choose, select that specific component, then rinse and repeat that process until you have a full PC worth of parts. They even have AI available to review components and make suggestions for parts based on your needs. No matter the PC goodies you're looking for, Newegg's got you covered. You can check out all the cool features I mentioned via the link in the video description. Big thanks to Newegg for sponsoring today's video. And while you can find your PC parts over on Newegg, you can now now find your Android devices using Google's Find My Device Network, which is very similar to Apple's Find My Network, which has been on their phones and devices for ages at this point. Google did show this off in IO 2023. It was supposed to launch sometime last year. Completely missed that, but it's now finally here where you can see it's very similar to what Apple's had for a very long time. On top of that, they'll have some Bluetooth tracker tags that you can utilize, very similar to AirTags or like the tiles that came out. Previously, if you wanted to use the Find My Device app, you had to have an active internet connection. However, now it also works offline by using Bluetooth, not the ultra wideband that Apple does use. So they're still technically a little different. However, Google is rolling out an exclusive feature on their Pixel devices with the 8 and 8 Pro, as well as the Buds soon are going to be able to have tracking where you can even find it when the battery is dead on the device with Google saying that it uses specialized Pixel hardware, whatever that means, probably something similar to ultra wide band, but you're going to be able to track down your devices a little bit easier on Android thanks to this latest update. And thanks to some leakers, we got some pictures of Ryzen 9000. Look at that chip. Looks very much like Ryzen 8000. And it's allegedly Zen 5 Granite Ridge, all that good stuff, but it turns out it's fake. So if you see this picture flowing out on the internet and you're like, hey, doesn't that look like Ryzen 8000? They're gonna look roughly about the same anyways. Some people are excited for this kind of stuff, but it's a fake image. I think Reese is fake. I'm pretty sure he is. When was the last time you saw Reese? I didn't. Yo, welcome back to Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet and hey, 
we have some deals for you today. Starting off with these hot pink Asia Horse sleeve cable extension kits for only $9.99, making them $10 off. But then next up, we have one of my favorite additions to any gaming setup. This is Uperfect 15.6 inch 1440p 120Hz portable gaming monitor for only $89.99. But then on the complete opposite of the portability spectrum, we have the Samsung Odyssey G9 5SC, which is a 49 inch 5120 by 1440 240Hz curved OLED gaming monitor for only $1,099.99 cents making it $700 off and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news cheers well Reese, here's the deal when it comes to Nvidia's next gen gaming GPUs the RTX 5090 and 5080 are now being reported on when they're gonna release and it's kind of exactly when everybody expected it to so reports are coming out from well-known leakers that the 5090 and 5080 are gonna be some of the first GPUs that Nvidia is gonna release they're gonna focus on the high and gaming chips to be released in the fourth quarter of this year. Shocker, I know. October, November, December is when we're expecting it. This is backed up by another well-known leaker. It says end of the year, so probably around holiday time. October, November, December, somewhere in there. You can potentially maybe see like a Gamescom announcement and then a release a little while later. Since Gamescom is happening in August, them waiting like a month and a half to launch doesn't really line up, but they've released GPUs in November and December previously. They may not even try to target the 2024 holiday shopping season and launch it like right after Christmas or something like that. It's hard to say, but in case you're holding off, now you kind of have a good clear understanding of the three months you're holding off until. And what we do not have a good clear understanding of is what exactly is going on with Intel's 13th and 14th gen high end chips. There's new reports that are coming out by a Korean investigation that Intel might be suffering some stability issues, specifically on their highest end chips. This is coming after the Tekken 8 community has been having particular problems with Intel's 13th and 14th gen i9 chips, specifically over in South Korea, and Intel is actively investigating what's going on. It's an out of memory bug that's allegedly happening, but because this has made its way into mainstream Korean media, a lot of people are now coming out and talking about how they have been struggling with their high-end Intel chips. So a lot of reports are popping up on forums. Reviews on Intel's CPU pages appear to be indicating, yes, there's some like instability where it was running fine in the first few months, and then it kind of fell off later on. And even over at WCCF Tech, Hassan has reported that his CPU has been struggling and that they saw the degradation in the 14900KS as well. A lot of the speculation is that Intel, in order to get these clock speeds and this high performance out of their silicon, can, they are just pushing the voltage past what these chips can reasonably sustainably hold over a long period of time. So in order to hit the 6.2 gigahertz clock speed that you're seeing on a 14900KS, well, that's coming at the cost of longevity of the chip. Same allegedly is going on with the 13900K and 14900K. Other people coming out and talking about, yes, I've had issues with my 14900K. I can't even get it to post anymore after putting it in a B760 motherboard. Now, obviously, Intel says that they're aware of this, they are looking into this potentially. This could just be related to some BIOS hiccups. The motherboards aren't dealing with the chips properly and it just requires a micro code update where you go into your BIOS, it's patched and your CPU runs like normal and this is just a bug that's being found out or it could be the speculation that, you know, these chips are just being pushed way too far for way too long. However, also just a reminder, if you are experiencing this type of instability because the CPU is degrading, they have warranties like Intel has a three-year limited warranty on the CPU, and if it's dying because Intel pushed it too far, I think it falls under that hopefully. We'll have to see how this all plays out, but I'll also toss the question off to you. If you're on a high-end i9 13th, 14th gen chip, are you experiencing any of these issues? Are you seeing any of these instabilities? I've been on a 13900K since it came out on multiple systems. I personally haven't seen this. I've built many 14900K PCs. I've given most of them away, so I don't have any long-term data on that. I'm just curious, what has been your experience? Which, let's read about your experiences from yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Abdul saying, guess we can all say, RGB is finally showing its true colors. That's a great comment. That's, that's like S plus tier. 
You, gold star for you, Abdul. Then we got Brad saying, last I checked, electronics don't like wet. Vomit is wet. Hence, unicorn vomit must be extra wet, doing extra damage to your video card. I checked the logic and it checks out. Science. I give that like a C minus comment. I, I don't like that one as much. Abdul definitely hit the nail on the head there. Then Giraffiti saying, you sent my mind way back mentioning the Samsung Arc review. That's actually how I found your channel. I was in the market for a TV as a monitor solution, which of course the Arc came into conversation. However, your review helped inform me that I was setting myself up for more problems than benefits. Been rocking an LG C2 for over a year now and avoided the arc thanks to your review. I think that's a solid choice. Good decision going with the LG monitor over that one. Then we got the game bench saying, I've had Trident Z RGB RAM in my main system for about four years at this point. The 1080 Ti removed last year for a 3080 Ti does not have burn marks on the backplate and the system is generally running 24 seven. Grant that the GPU is vertically mounted and perhaps it helped prevent that or maybe the colors I'm using aren't emitting the right wavelength of UV light to cause this. It's a possibility, it's a mystery, but we did, just like I talked about with the 14 900K, 13 900K issue where like this is being reported in one place, so a lot of people are now coming out and saying that they have this. There's just as many people like Warrior of Misfortune coming out and saying, my Corsair RAM has burnt into my 3070 backplate. So it appears like it's not just G-Skill, it's not just one manufacturer of uh, paint for graphics cards. It appears like it's affecting a whole host of people. And I, I this is the first I'm hearing about it, but it's a neat, interesting thing that we're gonna keep our eyes on as it continues to progress. We might have GPU manufacturers come out and now start promoting like UV resistant paint. Like that'll be a big talking point at Computex or, you know, uh, RAM manufacturers talking about how they're using different diffusion material on their RAM or the, how they're using different sourced RGB LEDs to make sure that everything's good and tasteful so that your computer's not burning up. But I'm burning down out. My eyes are burning. I went to go look at the eclipse. Did you know you're supposed to use glasses for that, Kyler? Huh? Do you know you're supposed to look at the sun with glasses, not with your raw eyes? I just stared up at that sucker. I, we both stared up at that sucker, you know? Um, just great Google in that sun. I found the hot new screwdriver. You found, where was the hot new screwdriver? Desk over here. Oh, well, you know, I like putting that on the desk over there. All right, I'm done with hot news. That was a long outro. You're welcome.